Hello everyone and welcome to the third edition of the Furry Valley podcast. My name is Simba and I will be your host today. Thank you to our live audience for coming along to listen in. We'll be addressing some of the questions you raised during the course of the podcast. Today, I'm joined by community members Ceylon and Marlboro to discuss fursuits and fursuiting. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Just good, got good. back from the convention. Oh, excellent. Good timing. How about you, Marlboro? I'm doing pretty good. It was a bit of a towering day, but Monday. Monday is always like that, isn't it? Maybe we should make our podcast later in the week. But <laughs> <laughs> so I'd, I'd like to get us started by talking with our guest, Ceylon, who is a fursuit creator. Could you tell our listeners a bit about yourself so, uh, so they can get to know you? Um, I started making fursuits probably about 2009, uh, 2008, 2009, right after I got out of high school. Um, I continued making fursuits probably up until... Uh, probably about 2012, 2013, and I've just gotten back into it in the past few years. Um, I've also first suited before. I've owned several heads. Uh, have never actually. I did own a full body suit, but then I uh, decided that I liked partials better. But um, I've gone to many, many conventions, vended at many conventions, and uh, yeah, dealt with uh, many customers, many different types of styles, and uh, overall, just uh, a lot of different fursuit things, a lot of diverse stuff. Mm. This is really interesting to me. I mean, it's such a unique hobby. How did you get into it? Did you have other creative endeavors previous? Um, I basically got into it because I was already in the uh, fandom drawing drawing pictures and stuff, and I um, saw that there were fursuit heads and I didn't know how they were made. I, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, my first head that I made was made out of um, tape and uh, wire, wow. and then I discovered a live journal community. But... Um, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool to find other people that knew how to make the stuff and then share information on how to make it, especially around in the earlier days. Did you did you find it took you long to sort of get into the swing of making them, or was it quite a quick, quite a quick? Uh... It, was, it was extremely quick. Um, okay. The tutorials that were online and the community was very supportive. Uh, my first head that I made probably took me about a week. Um, I uh, immediately got into that. Uh, my first head, actually, I refurbished it and sold it. Um, sold it for $250, which was uh, pretty good for a first first head. Yeah, um, gosh, goodness. What what was that first piece you made? Uh, it was a Doberman. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you know, does the suitor still use it today? Um, I made it, oh, gosh. Um, oh, I can't remember what his name was, but he was a very popular fursuiter back in the day, uh -huh. his first head. Um, but uh, I don't know if it's still around, but I know my second head that I made is still around. Cool. What, what do you like most about creating fursuits? I actually, for me, it's really interesting. I like how it's streamlined. Um, I like how I could make a um, resin base, uh, like just... Uh, you know, it's also already sculpted. It's already all this. I could just cast one, and then I could put fur on it and make it however I want it, or so however do, I want it. So, do you find the process? I mean, to me, as someone who has no experience with this, it it, it seems incredibly difficult. Do you find it actually quite easy um, now that you've done it a lot of times? I mean, you say you it, start with the base, and yeah, it really depends what it is. Okay. Uh, the uh, like I said, the ones that I prefer making are the resin um, heads, the resin realistic heads, because you know it's very formulaic. There mm. are ones that there was one that almost took me half a year to complete. Um, it was a 3D printed, uh, articulated jaw, uh, realistic badger head, Gosh. and that was the single handedly the most difficult fursuit I have ever worked on in my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, that sounds um, yeah, pretty intensive. Yeah, it was, um, uh, it was. I don't recommend 3D printers. <laughs> you don't. I mean, we've got an audience question. I know about 3D printing, so we'll get to that later, and we can say a bit more about that uh, when I bring that up. Um, I was curious as well. You, as you've mentioned the first 
first head you've made and obviously the badger suit. Is there any particular fursuit that you sort of is most memorable for any reason? Um, well, I, <laughs> there was one of the earlier fursuits that I made, there was a bird and, um, the guy was very, very, um, very kind, very giving. Like he, he even tipped me on the fursuit, but that was the only not safe for work fursuit that I ever made. Right. Um, right. He, um, he, he ended up, um, getting the suit confiscated, uh, in for, for some reason in Canada or something like that. And then, I I didn't know any of this happened, and I had just gotten my inbox on Fur Affinity just completely flooded with messages saying that my suit was on TV. And oh I, wow! <laughs> I was like, what's going on? Like, I made that like, three years ago. What is going on? They're like, oh yeah, uh-huh. I, like he wasn't he wasn't. Ar- people kept saying he was arrested, but he wasn't. Like it was confiscated, right? For what it was, I, I really don't know. Remember, but. It was on TV, and it was uh-huh. amazing, and that's the one that remembers the most because it was <laughs> it was on TV. That's that's pretty crazy. Gosh, what law must have that come under? I wonder. Uh, I think it was indecency laws. I think it was confiscated for indecency. Um, but right. Was he? Did he have it in public or something? I think so. Uh-huh. Um, right, right. I think yeah. it was outside of a con. Like uh-huh. I said, this, God, this was. 2010 uh-huh uh-huh long time ago gosh <laughs> could you could you yeah gosh what a shock <laughs> on television yeah but <laughs> my suit was on tv my bird suit was on tv oh my gosh <laughs> and it got they, they they can't be there can't be many people who can say they've had an 18 plus fursuit on tv on national news gosh <laughs> Other people ask me, can you make me a YIF suit? <laughs> uh-huh. I, well, yeah, for marketing, I can imagine. Gosh. I actually didn't get any people. This was a long time ago when fursuits costed maybe uh, six to $700 for uh-huh. a YIF suit. Um, and um, people didn't, people would lowball you. People were like, can you make me a suit for 200 And I was like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. Mm. So, I mean, that sort of moves us on to to the business side of things. So some some fursuits, at least nowadays, cost thousands of dollars. Furry artists, some for like you know drawings and such, you get unscrupulous clients. But you know, it's rarely going to cost you more than a hundred bucks or so. If if you do get someone who's a bit dodgy, so how as a fursuit maker, when it costs thousands for a product, do you properly shield yourself from business issues like customers who don't pay or if they unfairly claim your product's damaged, that sort of thing? I did have one, one of the, the reason why I stopped making fursuits for a long time was I ran into a customer who uh, I had a lot of issues with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I now know that uh, the only way that I will probably sell fursuits be outside of, um, you know, trusted individuals is probably using eBay. Mm-hmm. Um, because they protect you from chargebacks. Yeah. Um, but uh, this particular uh, customer, I had showed them work in progress, stepped all the way up until the end. And uh, right when I got the entire head fully furred, fully everything, uh, minus the ears, they said they hated it and that they wanted me to change it and that I needed to change it. And it was due in a week and a half. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Said, well, um, I don't think I could do it this fast, and they threatened a chargeback. And I said, okay, well, all right, well, I'm going to do my best, and then you'll at least have it. But because it's casted, it's casted resin, I said, it's going to need some time to gas out. It'll be fine. You just, when you get it in the mail, open it up and just sort of like leave it out, and, you know, the, the smell will go away. It's not mm-hmm. toxic. It's fine. It's just silicone. Um, and, um, so I rushed the fursuit head. It looked good. Like I was pretty proud of that. Um, and I got it to them. They got it before the con. They opened it up. They, they did an unboxing video and they complained about the, the smell. They did, they complained about stuff. They, I had, was it, I think there was three videos. One of them was an hour long. One of them was half an hour long. And the other one was also half an hour long. And then she did a charge back on me. Mm. Uh, keeping the suit and everything and then put me on artist beware 
saying that I wouldn't respond to her. Um, but the thing was, is that I had already responded to her before she put me on artist beware. It was a yeah. big, massive uh, like fight between us and everything. Uh, especially with, I was, it ended up being that the artist beware people said, Hey, you know, you should probably take down all of these videos because they're completely inaccurate and was slandering my name because yeah. Yeah. And she said, mm -hmm. I didn't give her any work in progress pictures, but I did. Um, and it's such a shame. I can, I can imagine that must have been really demotivating. I mean, you said you stopped for a few years. It's really unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, the biggest hit was financially. Um, yeah. Yeah. Refunded her uh, partial. She liked the tail. She liked the feet. Um, mm -hmm. she, I think she liked the paws. She just didn't like the head. So I refunded her the partial for the head. Uh, I got the head back. Um, and uh, I had to change uh, the markings or whatever. Um, to sell it but um all in all i got paid uh, it was an 800 dollars partial um and i lost probably about 400 dollars because i had to resell it yeah uh, gosh. ouch yeah it that was pretty bad so mm. um so, that's yeah. obviously that's a, a bad experience i was wondering do you do you have any advice for people who want to get into fursuit, fursuit making? And, and also from the other side, do you have advice to anyone who might be considering buying a fursuit? I actually do. Um, I say you may find a maker that you really, really like the, like, the, like the head of and everything. But if they don't have a really, really solid reputation, I would not go with them. I would much rather say... Go with someone with a very good, solid reputation and dealing with um, even even issues with fursuits and stuff mm -hmm. and pay that extra money to have the reliability because it's really going to help out in the long run, especially if you get the fursuit and there's going to be issues with it. And I will say this more times than not, there will be at least some issues with the fursuit mm -hmm. um, and let's go with some extremely high-end makers like Corazel or Don't Hug Cacti type stuff. But mistakes do happen. Um, you know, seams do pop and, you know, sometimes things don't fit. Yeah. And I would definitely say go with someone very reliable um, before you would go with someone that, you know, is, you know, and don't, don't try to lowball because... Mm -hmm. You're not gonna get a six thousand dollar Corazel head for three hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's um, that's really good advice for those who are looking to buy a fursuit. You mentioned there about reputation being very important. So, if you were a a new fursuit creator, what advice do you have for those people who are looking into getting being the maker? Oh, I would definitely say advertise on Facebook. Advertise okay. Advertise on Amino advertise on um, uh, Instagram. Those are the biggest three that you're going to get the most of the fursuit customers. And the thing is, is don't do commissions until you're probably three or four heads in. Go on to Furby, which is a furry auction site, and auction yep. it off. And the so thing just is, create what you want, what you're good at, and then sell it just yeah. to anyone who'll buy it. Yeah, I got you. Cool. Interesting. Here's the most interesting part about that. The person that usually buys it will say, hey, could you turn this into a partial or could you, uh, you know, could you make it more look like my character? And then you could charge on top of that. So yeah. it's sort of like a commission, but not quite much. Yeah, and, you've got you've got sort of an upsell that sort of creates itself. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And uh, one of the other things that I would definitely say, too, if you're a very beginner maker there are many companies now that you could buy bases already made. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's a great way to learn how to fur. Uh, if you're going to, you know, learn how to, you know, sculpt the base and stuff, you know, definitely go ahead and do that. But I would say learning how to fur is probably a bit more important than it is learning how to sculpt the base because yeah. you could always, like I said, with the resin heads, just one sculpt. And then, bam, you got a bunch of bases. Yeah. That's um, it's really interesting. I'm, I'm, I've got no experience with creative stuff, so I really appreciate your, your insight and your knowledge of this. It's a fascinating world. 
If any of our listeners are interested in finding out more about Ceylon and his creations, potentially to commission him, please check out the links we'll be putting in the description uh, for the video when it's posted up on YouTube. I'd like now to chat with Marlboro a bit about fursuiting and attending conventions with a fursuit. Could you tell our listeners a bit about yourself, please, Marlboro, so they can get to know you? All right. I am a New Jersey fur. I'm a senior in high school. Uh, I've been in the fandom for about almost four years. Cool. So what kind of fursuit do you have? Is it the same as your fursona, or is it a different character? Uh, the current, like, suits I have, uh, one is an Asriel cosplay. Okay. Another is a spirit head I bought at a con that I'm just kind of, like, playing around with. And are they are they sort of a representation of your your persona, that spirit head, or I, I don't know. I'm sorry. What is your persona? My persona is a sloth bear. Ah, cool. <laughs> Very unique. How did you um? How did you first get into fursuiting? I mean, you're quite young. Uh, on this old like, it's basically dead now. Mm-hmm this community called Drawcast. I was always like into like the art aspect of the fandom. And then I saw this person I was following was making a fursuit and I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. I want in yeah. on that. <laughs> do any of your friends in, in uh, high school do the fursuit stuff as well? Uh, no, but I did manage to get like one of them into the fandom. Okay. Well, that's cool. It's always good to have a friend to enjoy <laughs> things with. Someone who gets you. Um, what, what do you like to do most while you're in fursuit? I want to, like, uh, maybe get into, like, fursuit dancing or just, like, acting in general. Cool, cool. So when you've, I think you mentioned you've been to a couple of cons, have you? Do you do dancing at those? I haven't gotten to enter any of those yet. Ah, okay, but you'd like to. That's what you're hoping to do. Cool, <laughs> cool. One thing I've always been curious of, I... I be- correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's the case that you can't really machine wash fursuit. So how do you keep it clean? Like if you get some mud splashed on it from a puddle, how do you how do you wash it properly? Uh, kind of like fill up a bathtub with like warmer, cool water, depending on like how your suit's like markings are. Like if it's airbrushed, mm-hmm. turn it inside out and wash it with cool water i get you and then you just hang it on the line to dry i guess outside yeah mm. so what's what's sort of like the most interesting thing that's ever happened to you while you've been fursuiting at a con or you mentioned to me you go around in your neighborhood sometimes with a fursuit <laughs> yeah what sort of cool stuff have, has happened to you uh when i was walking around the neighborhood i was in my spirit head which is like this horse Oh, like Spirit, Sally, and the Cimarron? Not exactly, like... I'm trying to figure out how to word this well, properly. Um, what, what we can do is, on the YouTube video, we'll put a link to the picture, if you can provide us a picture with the, of the first who had just, we've got a bit of reference, that'll be cool. But yeah, what happened to you? Um... I was with my sister and a friend of mine, mm-hmm. and we walked by, like, I guess our neighbors were having like a like a hangout or something. Yeah. But like they were all just kind of like giving me this look like what is this <laughs> what is this tiny person doing? <laughs> were they they friendly about it though, just sort of joking around? Yeah, like one of them was like, Hey, can uh, I wear that? <laughs> I think um a lot of people find it it helps them come out of their shell a bit when they're in the first suit. Do you do you share that sort of sentiment? Oh, absolutely. Like, Uh I have the hardest time, like, talking to people, Mm -hmm. like, out of suit, because, like, I'm a very nervous, anxious person Uh in general. But you think when you're in suit, you sort of forget about that, and you can be in character, and it gives you a lot more confidence, do you feel? Yeah, Uh and people tend to, like, come to me more than me going to them. I see. So you you find it difficult to approach people, but if people approach you, you find that easier. Yeah. That's cool.
people. What do you what do you think is the sort of most important things that a convention organizer can do to make your experience as a fursuiter, you know, as good as possible as it can be at a con? I'd say like definitely provide like a rest area and refreshments because it does get super hot in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you tend to wear it for sort of many hours at once or do you guys have the, regular breaks? The longest I've worn one was four hours and I'm not doing that again. <laughs> right. So it does really get very hot very quickly then. Is yeah. there, is there sort of cooling insulation or anything inside? I don't know how these are really structured. Do you also have anything like that built into it? I usually build mine on balaclavas, if okay. that's how it's pronounced. Mm -hmm. And those kind of have like a bit of cooling functionality, but I know some people use fans or just hydrate yeah. regularly. Yeah, yeah, I guess drinking a lot of water, especially if you're a con in summer, is going to make a, a huge difference, yeah. What sort of advice do you have for someone getting their first fursuit? Uh, I'd say set boundaries, first of all, because, like, there are, like, people who will kind of think, oh, my God, he's in a suit. That means they want to be hugged and touched and poked. Yeah, yeah. So, you, I mean, what should, okay, so for people who are not fursuiters, what should we bear in mind when we interact with fursuiters? How can we, you know, make sure we don't um, cause the fursuiter any problem? Uh, keep in mind that we don't really have peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. So, like, you have to approach us from the front and, like, let us know that you're approaching us. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, communication. You don't want to sneak up on a third switch. And you should ask, you know, if you want to hug, that sort of thing, right? Yeah, definitely ask if they want to be hugged because some first just don't want to be touched. Yeah, yeah. I think um, people can forget sometimes, think, oh, it's just a big cuddly animal and there's a person in there. And it's um, obviously important to uh, be conscious of that. Yeah, I personally don't really mind the hugs and everything because, mm -hmm. like, I'm a tiny person. I like hugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, I know some of my friends, like, if someone walked up to them and hugged them and they didn't know who this person was, they'd be very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Especially, I suppose, especially if they're a bit um, introverted and getting to know new people, they need a bit of time to get used to someone, I suppose. Yeah. Um, are you going to any con soon? Are you have any, anything planned that you're going to be suiting at? I plan on going to Castle Point Anime Convention okay. in May. Cool. Suiting um, as Ralsei from Deltarune. Oh, cool. So you do sort of cosplay as well as fursuiting. Yeah, I like to mix the two. Ah, do you, do you make your own stuff for that? or? Uh, right now I'm working on Ralsei. I ordered a base from... West Custom Creations. Okay, cool. Do you, do you do sort of the whole like dressing up and all the makeup and stuff too, uh, too for that kind of thing? Sometimes, but I'm like not exactly the best at makeup. I usually have to have a friend. Do I that got stuff you. For me. Yeah, I, I, I play League of Legends a lot, and there's um one of the professional players for that. He does amazing cosplay. It's absolutely fantastic. Whole whole of the world that um. It's it's amazing for me to learn about this sort of stuff. Um, really appreciate you coming on and um, talking about this with us, especially being so nervous. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you ever so much. And um, hopefully we'll get to to see you at a con sometime soon, either the anime con you mentioned or some fur cons in the future. Yeah, that would be that would be great. So next we're we're going to turn to our lovely audience and answer some of their questions so we'll have a uh, Ceylon and Marlboro both uh, answering these questions uh, a reminder just quickly to our li live audience if you wish to ask either of our guests or both our guests some questions please post in the podcast text channel that's a couple of channels above the voice channel in our discord just going to go to the chat now and uh, get started with some questions so I guess uh, first for Ceylon, uh, coming back to 3D printing, Janard mentioned, what do you think of 3D printing in fursuiting? Um, it's extraordinarily difficult. Um, I would definitely say uh, 
it really depends upon the material and depends upon the head. Anything bigger than a very, very small head will definitely need, um, it's going to have a lot of weight issues. Um, the mesh method that people are commonly using, it breaks very easily if you use anything that, well, it breaks really easily no matter what you use <laughs> from what I, I have discovered. Um, the first entire head that I made was incredibly heavy because we made um, the infill too thick. Um, we made it thinner, which made it more brittle. Uh -huh. Had to find something in between, but <laughs> still too heavy. And then we had to put a football helmet in it to support it because it was too front heavy. And it was just a big disaster. It's still very, very heavy on the customer. He's very happy with it. But at the same time, it's a very uncomfortable head. But it's yeah. the main beast. I, on the I, oh, oh, I, was, I was just going to say, um, I guess by the time you've messed around sorting all these issues out, you may as well have either been quicker creating it from scratch instead of 3D printing it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the biggest issue that we had was the, um, the head was based around a 3D uh, scan of a badger skull because we wanted high realistic teeth yeah. percentages to be very accurate. Um, overall, I think I would have just been so much easier with foam and just plastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Foam and plastic, and then we could have 3D printed the teeth um, because uh, I think 3D printing parts, just like parts is perfectly fine like a nose or mm -hmm. um you know teeth or um you know if, if there if there is you know rigid other rigid structures but 3d printing a whole entire head oh no no yeah no, 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 <laughs> never never again i think um <clears throat> it's possibly one of those things that over the next 10 years as we see tech with 3d printing and such evolve it might become more um more more feasible to do it in that uh that sort of way but yeah for the time being um there is a new thing that i was just informed of where okay. there is 3d printers that print foam oh okay but the foam is still the same weight as the plastic so it could still be quite heavy then but it's flexible so okay. i don't know, but i think that i think the technology could get there eventually Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Janard also asks, what's the best cooling for a fursuit? Marlborough mentioned about fans and that sort of thing. Is that standard or are there yes. any other ways? Okay. Yes, okay. fans are very, very standard. Um, uh, cooling vests are also uh, very common as well. Uh, they're very expensive, but if you're already paying several thousand for a fursuit, you might as well get the cooling vest, and I highly recommend them. Okay. Uh, fans, uh, vents, cooling vests and buying uh, correct fur. Uh, sometimes specific types of fur is incredibly thick. Uh, like if you're going with black, you might as well go with the brand that most people use instead of the really, really nice, silky, smooth, thick fur. I mean, they, it, that looks really, really, really nice, but it's going to be the most awful thing you ever tried wearing. <laughs> yeah. Um. So Clementine asks, what do you think is the appeal of fur cons when you have access to almost all the furries out there on the internet? Oh my goodness. So I just came back from my first convention that I was not vending at. I just came back yesterday. It is so fun. You get a million, <laughs> you get like, we had several thousand people all dressed up. I mean, probably about a thousand people just dressed up as animals and you run around like animals and you bark and howl and make noise. <laughs> have fun and um like there's fursuit games where people were playing around with like uh balloons and balls and stuff and then there was raves and just people walking around um there was games going on everything is so much funner even if you're not even wearing a fursuit if you're just around fursuiters because most of them have this really high energy and they're really funny to watch like it's it's like being in a not like in a in a play that is just just happening on a whim it sort of brings people to life you know helps them come out yeah. of their shell i guess yeah oh, yeah absolutely. 
Absolutely. Even people that aren't suiting, it brings them out of their shell. I had conversations with people who were mm -hmm. very, very shy and they were, they were like, you know, this is the only time that I feel like I could be myself and, you know, run around and just be ridiculous. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Miss all of the crazy artwork. <laughs> I th I think um people would be a lot happy generally in life if they um you know allowed themselves to en enjoy themselves a bit more. And that oh, sort of sort of brings us on to our our next question by Rafalos, who asks, "Is it awkward to go to a con without a fur suit?" Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You could come just in completely fine straight clothes. Uh, street clothes. Um. In fact, most of the people that attend are just wearing their normal clothes. They'll have badges um, where you could see what their persona is and everything. And they'll go around and they'll buy things, they'll commission things, or you could just even hang around and talk to them. People just like to talk about their personas and their mm -hmm. characters and games and pretty much everything that we talk about online. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So you gave you... me the chance I would go on for hours about. <laughs> How do you go about finding a reputable suit maker, and how much does an average suit cost? Uh, Miko Alamikos has asked that. Um, I say after looking at the prices uh, now, uh, when I first started out, it was during the Great Recession, and uh, a typical head would cost you $250 to $300. Now, uh, a typical head will cost you anywhere from $600 to $800 on the mid-range. Um, suits when I first started out were about 1000 to 1300 uh, Now they could cost you anywhere from 3000 to like 8000 I once saw a head sell for $6,000. Just a head. Holy. Wow. <laughs> I wish I had that kind of money. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that, so, that head every penny. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for people who like to be active, Marlboro, you mentioned about dancing and such. What would you say is the best way to minimize damages or rips or tears to your fursuit when you're, you know, getting active like that? Find a fursuit maker or find a grandma or anybody that could use a <laughs> surger on your fursuit. So there's a sewing machine and a sewing machine has a single thread and it, uh, it goes up and down, up and down or zigzags. Um, a serger is a machine that uses multiple um, uh, threads and it's it's what you have on your t-shirt it's around the edge of your t-shirt it's got all those little threads and it, uh, it helps things stretch and it keeps things together um so from my experience with dealing with repairing fursuits and stuff any fursuit's gonna get any fursuit that isn't surged and even ones that are surged are gonna get rips and tears and I would even say that if you have a new fursuit, stretch it out. The fur eventually stretches and stuff. Um, don't worry too much about, you know, going at a rave and you pop a seam. Because when you get back, you're going to say, oh, well, this seam popped because it was either too tight or too loose or something. And when you hand sew that over, the fur has already stretched out to sort of fit a bit better. Mm -hmm. and I think just there's just going to be repairs, and through the course of the time, there, you're going to get to a point where you won't need too many repairs anymore because the fur will already be pretty used to how you move. Our next question is uh, from Ventus. He mentions, or he asks, how often does one need to brush fur? Oh my suit? goodness! Oh my goodness! I had to brush down Badger's suit like. He, he brushed it down every day, um, even when when he would put the suit on, when he would take the suit off, and we would put the suit back on again. Um, I've seen fursuiters who were would fursuit for about two hours, brush themselves down, fursuit for two more hours. Mm -hmm. um, I have seen people, I, I say it really need at the very, very least, brush it before you put it on. And yeah. don't, don't, uh, a lot of people... We'll use animal uh, brushes. Uh, you brush animals with. Don't brush it the pointy side um, with the flow. Brush it the more slicker side down because if you pull the fur out, uh, it's, it's not gonna grow it's not, back. It's it's not gonna grow back, and not only that, but it messes with the integrity of the fabric that's behind it. Mm -hmm. mm. So I use a regular hairbrush, just a regular you know human hairbrush on mine, and. Here's one thing that people don't think of. 
blow dry your suit. So just put it on low and blow dry. It sets all the fibers to go a particular way. And it, it, it makes, it's a lot better than brushing, but it takes a long time. So I mm-hmm. would say uh, if you can, before wearing your suit, before going to a con, blow dry the hell out of that and then, you know, brush it afterwards. Otter asks, what measurements do you need to make to tailor a fursuit for someone? This really depends upon the type of suit um, and the skill of the person that's making it. Mm-hmm. Typically, the safest and most reliable way to do everything is to do a duct tape dummy. And that is to have you and two friends wrap you around in duct tape um, and cut it <laughs> of you and then ship that over to the maker so they'll have a completely accurate representation of your body if you're doing a digigrade 100 percent do it even like just just do it um if you're getting a drop crotch first you need that um and uh if even if you're doing just a regular normal plant grade um some fursuit makers will just take measurements um i i i it, People do the um, like uh, the, the shoulder length, um, the length down to the crotch, uh, you know, legs. But um, overall, I've seen that not go too well because a lot of times customers aren't well versed in it. Um, you have to kind of measure. I personally, I would measure with the clothes that you wear because that's how you choose how a fursuit fits because. Yeah. Some people like loose clothes, some people like tight clothes. So I would say duct tape dummy. Otherwise, people take different measurements depending on what it is, who they are, everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Darth, ask. Go on, bro. Uh, really, the suits I've made have been personal, so like, I'd really go with what he just said. Cause... I only know how to make suits for people who are like four ten. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that's a that's my head is a nineteen point five inch head, and most most people have at least a twenty four inch head. So I can't use my head to measure for fur suit heads at all. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's very important to get sizing right. Extraordinarily important. Yeah, I can imagine. I guess, I guess each suit is sort of individually made to a person. Hmm. Yeah. Seradath asks, what would you say for someone who is on the fence of getting a fursuit sort of pros and cons? Uh, the pro? It's fun. It is so fun. You mm-hmm. will have so much fun. I think it is worth the amount of heat and uncomfortableness you will, you will experience. But if um, I if you have issues with heat, if you have issues with especially claustrophobia, mm-hmm. um, if you um, like have a lot of like clothing type allergies or or you know don't like tightness because underneath the fur suit you want to wear um, like I wear tights and I wear um, an Under Armour shirt. Um, uh, there, if if you do have a lot of issues with heat, you know you could get a fan in your head. You can get a cooling vest. Um, you could even do a partial, which is you know a, a head, paws, feet, and then wear regular clothes. You could even do a three fourths, which are legs, uh, feet, uh, hands, and a head. Um, that actually, I think that is that's what I wear, and I think that is probably my limit. I had a full suit. It was incredibly hot, but I live in the desert, so oh. uh-huh. <laughs> Arizona. I uh, I would strap ice packs to me, and I would still die. <laughs> That's another yeah. thing. One, yeah. T- Tobal Fire actually actually asked so his question: What's the best way to keep yourself cool with Under Armour if you don't use an ice pack? Um, if you don't use an ice pack, um, cooling vest. Um, but. There are different types of Under Armour. Um, I would get their, gosh, I can't remember what it is, but you could probably Google it. It's the type that is made out of Lycra that wicks away sweat. Um, So it wicks it away and it makes the air more breathable to you. So 
when you first put it on, it's going to be really, really hot. And then you sweat. And then, you know, you get used to one, the heat and two, you're a lot cooler because, you know, your, your sweat is, you know, wicking the heat off. Um, if you wear a cooling vest, you won't sweat as much. Um, but you have to have the right kind. There, there has been fursuiters that have had issues with heat exhaustion if they just strap ice packs to them because mm -hmm. the cooler, it tricks your body into not sweating. And you can actually overheat because the only parts that's being cooled is the core part of your body. And yeah. the thing that needs it the most is your head. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Jordan asks, what is the best way to get your first suit? And someone else mentioned, what sort of thing should you look for for a reference of a good creator? A uh, reference of a good creator. Um, uh, with... so, sort of like the reputation. What, what kind of things are you looking for that indicate you've got a good creator that you can rely on? I'd say like talking to like their past customers, like asking how their suits like turned out. So I, I get, yeah sort of seeing how the customer support was I suppose after they've bought it before they've bought it and and I suppose also asking them uh, how resilient their suit was you know did it stay together did they have problems with it and, and that sort of thing oh yeah um I would definitely also check artist beware um to see what uh if if you know one of the suit makers you like is on there and if they are see how they handle the situation because sometimes because somebody has a beware doesn't necessarily mean they're a bad, you know, maker or anything. It could just mean that they messed up. Yeah. And, um, customer service is really important. Um, I would definitely, if it were me, I would attend a fursuit con and ask fursuiters, uh, you know, if you see a fursuit that you really like, ask who made it, um, ask them if they had any issues with it. Um, and get the information about the fursuit. I, uh, I had never seen um, uh, another... Um, <laughs> somebody <laughs> posted a duct tape duck. But yes, <laughs> that is how it looks. And <laughs> it's, it's very awkward to have a duct tape dummy made. Um, uh -huh. It looks awkward. Your friend uh, looks pretty happy <laughs> how do you that thing. That <laughs> you have to have a friend cut it off for you. And wow yeah it, it gets very hot very fast so make sure you do it very very fast and get it off you very, very quickly because uh -huh. you can you you could actually die if you are not if you are alone and try to do it yourself so because it doesn't allow your skin to breathe so yes yeah. it's very important so, to have our friends there to help you we've we've learned today boys and girls don't wrap yourselves up in duct tape alone good good life advice <laughs> 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 um, um Corn asks, um, as much as he wants a fursuit, he couldn't realistically pay for it all at once. Do some fursuit makers take installments as a kind of payment, like for a car? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> In fact, the uh, amount of people that actually pay for a fursuit, most people actually do payments. Um, in fact, a lot of people also just buy partials and then upgrade later to a full suit. And I think both ways are actually very good when it comes to uh, being able to budget for a fursuit. Uh, the other option is to make one yourself. Um, heads, a lot of skill involved. Um, paws, not so much. You could easily mm -hmm. make paws pretty easily. You could easily make just a regular suit with a little bit of, you know, Googling and a little bit of, uh, you know, joining some Facebook groups and asking questions and watching videos. Um, I think it's a lot rewarding if you make your own suit. I, I find it very, very rewarding for me, but a lot of people, you know, they just want to, they just want to set down $3,000. and just. <laughs> I, I suppose if you've got the money then. Yeah. <laughs> um, Making the suits fun. Yeah. I, I think it's probably like cooking in a lot of ways where if you make something yourself, it's much better, you know, it definitely fits better. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Leaf asks, what was both of your first experiences of fursuiting like? Um, uh, my first experience with fursuiting was uh, there was an art walk here. And in the uh, late 2000s, it was the largest art walk in the United States, which is people would set booths out on the street and sell their artistic stuff. 
I, my first first suiting event was going to one of those. People didn't know what furry was. They didn't know any of that. All I saw was this, this big Doberman head with little paws because I was, I was a small person and it was a big head walking around in the crowd with my big pointy ears and people loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I got so many people walking up to me wanting pictures, you know, asking me where did I get it? And I said I made it and the people were just so like <laughs> I made this thing even though uh -huh. it was ugly. <laughs> and I, I that what that right there was what made me want to make more. What about you, Marlboro? What was your first experience? First oh boy. Okay, so this goes back to like what I said about like kind of setting boundaries for yourself. Mm -hmm. People really seem to enjoy poking me on the nose. Oh. This would be fine if I didn't get like bopped by the suit every time I got poked. Oh, I see, because it's not sort of properly attached. It's sort of hitting you. Yeah, and ah. when I took the suit off after like we left the con, my friend was like, your nose is super red. Are you okay? Mm. I guess that's another thing for people who don't wear fursuits to be aware of. Don't think just because you boop someone or you rub their belly that, you know, that's something that they like because they're not actually their character, much as, much as we may wish they were sometimes. Especially the belly thing, because, like, especially, like, with drop crotch suits, you don't know, like, if you're actually touching the belly. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's a big uh, issue. Okay. My... <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine that could get pretty awkward pretty quickly. Gosh. So, um, the badger suit that I made was a drop crotch, and uh -huh. it's we made a, a we made a pad. We made a very nice, uh, thick, uh, foam pad, so that wouldn't happen. Okay. That's certainly something for <laughs> for people to be aware of, though. Yeah, wow, gosh, I, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Pizza Fox asks, do either of you have a favorite famous fursuiter? And if so, who is it? And what, what makes them your favorite? I, I actually, this past weekend, I got to meet both Majira and I got to meet um, Telephone. I had seen Telephone oh, a time before. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, I just said I was jealous. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I I like them both. I I think Telephone is adorable. She runs around, she squeaks, and she's super fun to you know watch and play around with. And I I love Majira because he is so tall. Holy cow! And um, he will definitely talk to you and chill and just he's such a sweetheart. That's that's nice. I guess I think a lot of these sort of famous poppy fur people it could be easy to let it go to your head but that's nice to hear that she's um quite down to earth and um yeah treats you treats you well still um fig actually has made a comment it's a follow-up to <clears throat> a follow-up to one of the previous points about uh being careful with fursuits he mentions that if you s sort of scritch a fursuit it can pull out stitches and map the fur so that's uh i guess something else to be aware of yes oh yeah uh, the matting the fur is usually the biggest thing. Um, it, it, it really depends on the fursuiter because some fursuiters will, um, they will rub their bellies and stuff and, you know, offer hugs. So it's sort of like a, um, like a universal sign of, oh, you could scratch my belly and you could give me a hug, um, which is perfectly fine. It really depends on the fursuiter and the type of fur that I have with my fursuit mats really badly, so I wouldn't mm -hmm. ever want it. But a lot of the newer suits with different types of fur, it doesn't have that issue. But once okay. again, it's all personal preference. Uh, so just briefly to our audience, we're, we're out of questions at this point. We have a few minutes left. So if any of you have any last questions for uh, Ceylon Marlboro, could we uh, get those typed in podcast now, please? Just give you a moment or two just to to type that. I didn't ask you a DGB. Uh, let me scroll back up. <clears throat> so DGB asks, when fursuiting, do you feel that your character tends to differ greatly from your day-to-day -day personality? And if so, why do you think it is? A hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's just easier because, like, one, people can't really see my face and see that I'm nervous. 
and two it's just easier to kind of like melt into the character because like you're you just kind of get in your head okay i'm this person that's what we're rolling with you morph into them much more easily because you you know that the other people sort of see you as a um see you as that character yeah like when people look at me they're not really seeing this tiny person with like long hair they're just seeing oh look that's an animal running around <laughs> i actually um i have a hyper realistic uh fursuit that wears a military jacket and um i i don't really really change my personality too much but i really notice how other people interact around uh my my suit versus other people's suit um, I don't really have the issue of people running to run up and hug me and rub my belly, <laughs> but <laughs> it really depends on what your first suit is. If yours is a big, brightly colored toony suit, you're going to have a lot of people run up to you and try to hug you. If yours is a really super hyper realistic suit with uh, like a military jacket, people are going to, you know, treat you like you're wearing a military jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they sort of see you as the character as a real person. You know, if you looked super, super cute and anime toony like in real life, you get lots more hooks than if you look like you're a sort of gritty military person, I suppose. <laughs> for for <laughs> or otherwise. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I I like it. Um it's funny more people run up to me and hug me uh, when I'm out of suit than when I am in suit, but I love running up to and hugging other people when I'm in suit because they're mm-hmm. just like oh, Oh! Oh! <laughs> um, Ventus asks, how much water do you need to drink per hour while you're suiting? As much as possible. Just just chug that down. So yeah. it's better to have too much than too little, I guess. Oh, you will know when you need water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially if you have like problems with dehydration as is. Yeah. Don't don't even worry about drinking too much to where you'll think that you need to go pee because chances are you won't. You will sweat all of that out. Drink also make sure you're not drinking pure water. Make sure you're drinking Gatorade because you're gonna lose a lot of salts. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So you, wanna, you wanna keep that electrolyte balance, I guess. Uh, Fig mentions when suiting. How do you deal with it if people aren't pleasant to you and they pick on you or they're unkind? I try to get away. You get away from them. Do you find uh, many people are at cons or just generally like that? Uh, there is. I've actually had my head taken off, and like, people like this. Like the biggest issue is is drunk people. Right. People a lot at cons, and okay. um, I say uh, it's always good to have a handler if you can't see out very well. Uh, furry cons are not too bad because a lot of people around you are well versed and you know if somebody's being problematic they'll be removed um yeah. but if you're first suiting not at a furry con definitely have a handler have somebody not in suit with you it's it's really a absolute a necessity because like i almost had my head stolen by a drunk person which was not fun they just grabbed it yeah they just grabbed it yanked it off and started running off with it Gosh, was that a, at a con or outside a con? Or? That was at a. Uh, it was at one of the other um, the art uh, event that I was mentioning earlier. I would go to it every month, and uh, one of the times that happened. Wow, goodness! Mm-hmm. It's it's um yeah it's it's been a really interesting hour. I really appreciate you both coming on, um, and I'm glad to hear that mostly at least people are positive about it. A lot of good information here. Uh, I don't have a fursuit myself, but. Certainly should... after this, I'm thinking, well, it sounds like a lot of fun, you know. <laughs> hey, I want to I want to scratch your belly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd have to come to England for that first, but um, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Maybe maybe if Furry Valley hosts the convention, uh, we're, we're looking into hosting a convention in 2020, which we'd have a convention running simultaneously in both the UK and somewhere in America. No details yet. Um, but yeah, who knows? Maybe maybe we will bump into each other at one of those sometime in the future. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, that thank you both. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. Thank you um, both very much for coming on tonight. And uh, thank you for our audience for attending, as always, for asking questions. Thank you, everyone, for attending the Furry Valley podcast this week. Next week, we will be discussing furry conventions with two more guests.